Hey guys, today I'll be talking to you about topic two of the IV chemistry curriculum. I'll be answering questions from the end of chapter two in the Pearson 2014 IV chemistry HL textbook. So hopefully if you have any questions about the questions at the end of chapter two in that textbook, I can help you today. So let's get started. What is the electron configuration of the chromium 2 plus ion? So chromium is sort of a special case in terms of its electron configuration because it has a configuration that is sort of different from what might be intuitive but makes sense in terms of stability of the atom. So let's first write out the E config for chromium, which its atomic number is 24, so we'll want 24 electrons for a neutral atom. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, so now we have 10 here, 10 here, and then 4 more. Now it turns out that this chromium atom will actually be more stable if these two energy levels are half filled rather than a full one and a not full, not empty, or not half filled one because 4 is kind of a weird place, 4 out of 10. So what we would prefer then is for this atom to, or what the atom would prefer is for it to have a configuration that looks like this, where we have a half-filled d orbital and then a, or d sublevel and then a half-filled s sublevel. So the actual configuration ends up looking something like this. Now, if it's an ion, then there's another rule we need to remember. So, 2 plus would suggest we've lost two electrons, but for transition metals, we take away electrons first from the 4s sublevel and then from the 3d sublevel. So, let's just look away from this for a second so we can focus on this config we have here. So, if we take away one electron from 4s, then this goes to zero. And then we take away one more from 3D, then this will go to 4. So our final electron configuration, with everything else staying the same on this side, would be 4S0, 3D4. Based on those two rules of remembering how a neutral chromium atom begins, and then that we need to remove the electrons from the S sublevel first and then the D sublevel. So we have 4S0, 3D4. This is really all just argon if you use the format they're using up here. So then we can say our answer is D. What is the relative atomic mass of an element with the following mass spectrum? So this isn't too difficult of a question. We just need to know how to interpret the graph and do weighted averages. So see here we see 23 at 80%. So we can represent that in our weighted average as 23 times 0.8. And then we see 28 with a 20%. So we can represent that as 28 times 0.2. And then if you do this weighted average right here, then you should get 24. And so our answer is A. Which is correct for the following regions of the electromagnetic spectrum? So what would help us first is to draw an electromagnetic spectrum. Sort of, I'll do it in order of frequency, but I think it makes it easiest for this question. So at this end, at the lowest frequency, and high frequency. So over here we would have radio, then a little higher and we'd have microwaves, a little higher we have infrared, and we have visible light right here, then we have ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. Now the only ones we're concerned with are here, infrared and UV. So 
what we know from drawing out this spectrum here is that put arrowheads here is that infrared has a lower infrared radiation has a lower frequency than UV radiation so let's look at some of our answers here and see if we can make anything of that also what would help us is remembering that energy equals Planck's constant times frequency and so intuitively we can say that a higher frequency a higher frequency radiation will contain more energy so ultraviolet having high energy and short wavelength well that makes sense because ultraviolet's frequency is higher so its wavelength must be lower because they're inversely related plus it must have more energy having a higher frequency so this makes sense now let's look at the other side infrared has low energy and low frequency well compared to UV its frequency is lower and because of that its energy would also be lower based on our equation here so then we can just say already that A is the answer an ion has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10. Which ion could it be? So what I'm going to do first is write out the ground state configuration, electron configurations for each of these ions, and then uh, take away electrons to make them an ion and see which one has the correct configuration we're looking for. So all of these metals are going to share this portion here in common which adds up to 18 so then what we're gonna want is this atomic number minus 18 many more electrons so for nickel we're gonna want 10 more electrons so we would have a 2 there and an 8 here for copper we want 11 more so we would have 2 and 8 or 9 rather although the special case with copper is that to become more stable it will actually have one electron in its s sub level and 10 in its d sub level just having a half filled s sub level and a full d sub level is more stable than a full s sub level and a not full not half or empty 3d sub level so then we'll have the same thing here for a neutral copper. And then for cobalt, we have 27, so we would want 9 more, which would be 2 and 7. So now we're going to start taking away electrons by making these atoms. So this is 2 plus, plus, 2 plus, and 3 plus. So here we're going to take away two uh, electrons and we're going to start from the S sub level as for all transition metals. So if we do that, this will go away. And so we'll have 4S0, 3D8. If we do it with copper, then we'll take away, or copper 1 plus. Then we'll take away this one. This will become 0. This will stay 10. If we do it with copper 2 plus, this becomes 0. And this becomes 9. Then if we do it with cobalt 3 plus, this becomes 0. And this becomes 6. Now the one we were looking for was 3d10 only. No 4s sublevel. So it's going to, all of these have lost their 4s sublevel. So what we want is the one with the 3d10. So it looks like copper plus here satisfies that. So our answer would be B. Which describes the visible emission spectrum of hydrogen. So I think the easiest way to go about this is remembering this diagram. So then it goes a little, oop, a little further apart, a little closer together. And closer whoop, until you get infinitely close together up here. So 
we can see if it were a series of lines, these lines. Uh, what we need to know here, so if we had this as n equals 0, n equals 1, 2, 3, infinity. Uh, as we go to higher levels, the energy is increasing. And so we also know that E equals HF. So at these high energy levels up to infinity, we must have a very high frequency. And we also see that they converge based on how the distance begins to shrink more and more. And so our answer would be D. Which statements about the isotopes of chlorine, mass of 35, and mass of 37 are correct? They have the same chemical properties, they have the same atomic number, and they have the same physical properties. So the easiest one to do first would probably be atomic number. So if we remember what I'll call AZX notation, we have A up here, Z here, and X. That's atomic number, atomic mass. Oops. So we notice that they both have the same atomic number of 17, so it's pretty easy to say 2 is correct. Now chemical properties and physical properties. So with isotopes, we have a different number of neutrons, but we're assuming the number of electrons stay the same because the charges don't seem to change. So electrons are what change chemical properties. So if we have the same number of electrons as we do, then the chemical properties should stay the same. Physical properties, on the other hand, will actually change because neutrons are causing different masses of chlorine, which might lead to the easiest example would be different densities. If they have different densities, then you'll, ha or if they have different masses, then you'll have different densities because the masses will be different. So they will not have the same physical properties. And so our answer is A. Which statement about the numbers of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an atom is always correct? So let's just go through these answers and reason it out. The number of neutrons minus the number of electrons is zero. Well, no, there's no restriction on... Uh, this is essentially saying that the number of neutrons and electrons is equal, but that just isn't true. That's not always true. It doesn't have to be the case. The number of protons plus the number of neutrons equals the number of electrons. Also not true. In fact, more often you'll probably get protons plus neutrons equals more than uh, electrons. So this just isn't true. The number of protons equals the number of electrons. Now this actually is correct because they're talking about an atom as opposed to an ion. If this was an ion, then this might not be true because we would have a different number of protons and electrons, but it's an atom, which we assume is neutral. And in that case, the number of protons and electrons would equal each other to balance the charges out. So C would be our answer. We can also look at D. The number of neutrons equals the number of protons. Well, that's not really true either because we have isotopes. So we can have all kinds of different neutron configurations. So C is the only true statement. Answer C. Which quantities are the same for all atoms of chlorine? Number of protons, number of neutrons, or number of electrons? So number of protons, uh, well, the number of protons identifies the element because this is just the atomic number. So this is definitely correct. That'll always be the same for chlorine. Number of neutrons, not necessarily because we can have isotopes, which by definition have different numbers of neutrons. So that's not always going to be the same. Number of electrons, um, you could say that the number of electrons could change in different atoms of chlorine, but in IB we're going to define atoms, or we're going to assume that if they use the term atoms, they are not talking about ions and they're talking about an atom in its ground state at a charge of zero. So in that case, the number of electrons 
would always be equal to the number of electrons, so it would always be the same. And so our answer would be B. In the emission spectrum of hydrogen, which electronic transition would produce a line in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum? So this one's sort of just memorization and remembering um, which transitions produce which uh, types of radiation. So if we draw this out, oops. and then say n equals 1, n equals 2. We don't need to know this much for this question, but it is helpful to know all of these transitions because any of them can be asked. So if we drop to n equals 1 from any of these levels, let's just do n equals 2, then the emission that will result is UV or ultraviolet. If we drop to n equals 2, let's say from n equals 4, it doesn't matter which one, then this will be visible. Then if we drop to n equals 3, then what we'll get is infrared, or just rather IR. So remember, dropping to n equals 3 will give you infrared radiation. Dropping to n equals 2 will give you visible. And then dropping to n equals 1 will give you UV. Now what they're asking for in this question is in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. And so we can see here the drop to n equals 2 that I drew produces visible radiation. So we just need to see which answer has a drop to n equals 2. The only one that satisfies that is B, so that would be our answer. How many electrons does the ion with a mass number of 31, 15 protons, and a charge of negative 3 contain? So we're not really concerned with the mass number here because we're looking for electrons in an ion, which mostly concerns protons and electrons. So what we do know is that the atomic number is 15 based on this here. And so that means it, we start with a charge of plus 15. And then we add some number of electrons. Uh, to make it easier, I'll just say the electrons are x, not confuse ourselves. And adding those together, we get a charge of negative 3. So that means x equals negative 18. So that's our charge as a result of the electrons, and since each electron has a charge of negative 1, we can say that there are 18 electrons, which makes sense, because if there are 18 electrons and 15 protons, then we would end up with a charge of negative 3, right? So then our answer would be D, 18.